All right. Well, first, this rocks. Thanks for having me. Thanks for inviting me. I'm super pumped to be here uh, to get a chance to hang out with makers and inventors and hackers and engineers and uh, entrepreneurs. That's what I love to do. So uh, thank you. During the summer, I got to hang out with Dr. Fadon, Dr. Rensis, Dr. El Sawi, Derek Cantrell, Jay Watson, and I got to hang out at Tennessee Tech, see your makerspace. I was bummed I didn't get to go into the foundry, uh, but you guys were doing amazing stuff at Tennessee Tech, and so uh, bravo, hats off, thanks for everybody for being here today. Uh, let's jump right into it, uh, marketing your maker business. So. One of the coolest things about maker businesses to me, uh, you know, lots of entrepreneurial things are cool, but the hands-on uh, maker trend, the DIY stuff, and then, you know, making it easier for other people to make things um, has been one of the coolest things. I've been working in it for the last, I don't know, five or six years, covering it for Forbes, um, writing about it, you know, at the Harvard Business Review and other places. So, um it's pretty amazing. And, you know, I think we're, we're headed into a great time where there's lots of opportunity. Um, and so if you're on the fence of starting a, a business, I'd say jump in and do it. And I'll, I'll give you a few things that I've learned around the country as well as through my career. Uh, in 2014, I spent most of the year uh, traveling the country in an RV on a trip for Autodesk and HP and a few others called 3D RV. And we made a hundred official stops and probably a hundred more informal stops with, with makers, maker spaces, um, artisans of many, many types. Um, so it was big companies and small companies and uh, on a smaller scale than this national road trip we did. Um, I still do that today, you know, visiting with manufacturing companies and maker spaces and individual uh, individuals who are starting companies. They tend to range from, you know, you know, one and two person shops all the way up to 50 person, you know, small manufacturing facilities. Uh, so uh, the big thing that struck me and you've, you've probably heard, you probably heard most of this, uh, but, but I'll share some, uh, hopefully some new things for you. Um, the, the thing that struck me over the last few years, and, and there's been news where people say this, is every company today is a media company. You're in the business, large or small, um, for the most part, this is true. You're in the business of sharing information. Yeah, you make a product or you, you have a service, but you're a publisher. You're a news company in some way. You're a media company you're, because you're constantly putting information and ideas out there. So whether it's true in a, in a very strict sense, um, probably not, but it is true in the sense of um, you're communicating. Uh, lots of folks will say this, you know, everybody is in the business of sales or marketing in some way. You know, I've met many business people and engineers, um, technical people who say, you know, I'm going to start a company, but I'm not a marketing type. I'm not a sales type. I'm going to hire that out. And I'd, I'd have to say that that's, you know, candidly, that's a wrong answer. You know, um, we're all, each of us, always selling something, whether that's, you know, an idea or a product um, or ourselves in a job interview. Um, we always have something that we're trying to communicate in a way that we'd like the other person to jump into what we're doing. So I see marketing and sales. I mean, it's been the core of what I've done for tech companies mostly um, over the last 25 years. So I see it as the core to how to drive a business. Um, some might argue that it's, you know, just the great product and people will flock to you, you know, maybe use Apple as an example. Um, but given this premise of every company today is a media company in some way, um, I have two ideas to, to share with you. Uh, and I'll, I'll share some of the people that I've met along the way, um, you know, as little as a few weeks ago to, you know, the last couple of years. Um, so the, the, I said I had two major ideas that I was going to share and, and I probably should uh, tell you um, maybe they're not so major, you know, but I have two ideas that I'm going to share with you and uh, they're here on the screen. And uh, if you, I don't know if you guys have to take public speaking classes, but you know, they tell you, tell them what you're going to tell them, right? List it out, give them those bullet points. And then at the end you come back and you know, I'll bore you some more and I'll, I'll tell you the same thing. I'll even actually put the same slide up and I'll change the title. So, um, Telling your story, or at least preparing to, and finding and rallying your con your community, and you can call them customers. Um, but I think if you view it as a community, 
um, effort, then it'll change how you approach selling and it'll make it you know, a more pleasant experience for you as well as um, for your customer and the people who are interested in what you're building. So what you're making. So if you've not started yet, um, I would encourage you, and I'll, I'll jump into some more slides here in a minute, but the, the overarching idea here is if you've not started yet, think about how you like to communicate, whether that's photos, whether it's the written word, whether it's you know video, um, whether it's just photography, um, and I shouldn't say just, you know, it's a pretty powerful way to communicate. Um, so the, the main idea of this is what can you sustain? Because as you start, the choice you make will be what people will then sort of follow you in, you know, whether that's Instagram or Facebook or um, some other tool. Uh, and then within the fine rally, your community, you know, obviously you can build out your network in LinkedIn and that's important to do. And I think you have to do it intentionally, um, but you don't rely on that alone. Um, so the, other piece to that is building an influencer network. And so this is sort of the core group to me of the 10 or 20 people who you have a great relationship with and you make a choice to say, Hey, you know, if, if I'm sharing about this, will you, you know, share some of the things I'm doing? Um, and so I, I think that's a, you know, it's in the past been called an old boys network, you know, and um, I, I think the idea that you rally a group of people around you that are in an intimate circle, and you know, some are calling it a mastermind group, some call it a, um, a mentoring group, um, but you find the people who will support you and help you get the word out there um, about the business that you're building. So what I wanna do is jump into some people that I've met along the way and tell you a little bit about them and how they're using each tool. And it will rely on this idea of telling a story and them finding their own voice as well as how they address and connect with the community. I've got four primary ones, and then you know if I can list out a couple, I can list out dozens. So um, let me let me jump into uh, the first one, Kelly Roy, um, close to me here. I'm I'm near Seattle, by the way, uh, um, to the northwest of Seattle, a couple of hours out, and in Portland. I'm actually in Portland more frequently than I am in Seattle. And there's a great maker community in Seattle, but there's this crazy, amazing community of makers and 3D printing people in Portland, Oregon. So Kelly Roy started ADX Portland, which is primarily a makerspace, um, independent makerspace. And in the, she's well known in the community, but as part of her effort, she decided, and this is her LinkedIn profile, um, she decided that she was going to, and you look at the two arrows here, she's gonna do posts all through, she did it over about a 14 month period. And it was profiling the people for the most part, I mean, there may be some in here who are not part of her makerspace or not directly tied to the work she's doing at ADX, but I think the vast majority of them, they're profiles of the people that are in her space. And she spent over a year, she created more than a post a week. You know, there are like 66 of them. And she's built a following, as you see here at that second arrow, you know, over 4,000 people. And so if you're building a maker business, 4,000 people, that's, that's a, you know, a lot of times you're starting from a small niche. So, to build that out and she did it in LinkedIn and I, I believe, and I've never talked to her about it. I've talked to her about other things, but this is um, an intentional choice to target the person who's got a little bit more of a small business mindset or um, might be a good prospective customer to become a member of her space, which is a paid space. Right. Um, but she does a lot of incubation and accelerator stuff and really serves the community of makers, whether you're a member of her space or not. So there were a ton of posts that she did. And while each one didn't necessarily get a ton of views, it started to get people to pay attention to her, as you see there with over 4,000. And I believe that grew within just the first um, year of her doing that. And she'd been around before that. These are just more posts. I, I picked this one for, um, I like that gear. And um, you know, there's just all sorts of studios and glass makers and so forth that she's got in here. Uh, next guy. Um, Joel Telling, uh, you may have seen him if you're into 3D printing, uh, created a 3D printing channel on YouTube. Uh, I believe he still has a day job, but he's quickly morphed to where he's you know done over 250 videos, I think, in about a year. I've got his summary here. Um, started doing this April 2015, two and a half million views, you know, 42,000 subscribers. 
you know, I'm not saying that you're trying to build a YouTube channel out, but you can use this medium uh, to, and this is, this is obvious, but part of how he did it was he focused on how is he going to serve those people? And he asked them, what are the challenges you face? Right. And they wanted to know how to set up a certain type of printer or they wanted to know how to use filament with a certain type of printer. So he started problem solving for them and this community evolved. It's the same thing with Kelly Roy. You know, she started to do this in a small LinkedIn environment and it grew and that's part of how she shares her story. So we've got LinkedIn, uh, we've got YouTube, um, this guy, so here's the logo. I, this was the only place I could quickly find it um, from our 3D RV trip. And the, this is Ben Harris, who is a, a maker extraordinaire. Um, he's in North Carolina. He's actually probably been, if there's, is there a maker fair in Nashville? I'm guessing there is, and he's probably been to it. So Ben Harris started Harris Educational a number of years ago, and he's his claim to fame, and you can kind of see it down there, he's created a kit called Reinventing Edison. Um, the sign on the back says Reinventing Morse, and you know it's about DIY kit to build your own light bulb, build your own telegraph kit, and he markets mostly to educators. So the Maker Fair community is, is a lot of student-oriented you know, population. A lot of educators come to it. And this is, I think, in Atlanta, um, where I hooked up with him. We had known each other for a few years. And so he's been very intentional with the web and with Facebook. But his primary you know, means of communicating with folks is, is doing booths at the Maker Fairs. But he's also super active, built a maker community within uh, Burlington, North Carolina, and has continued to nurture that. Recently started a maker space, which is, I think is a nonprofit space, and they have a for-profit part to it. And uh, But again, coming back to community where he's nurtured over many years uh, a group of people to be active in the maker community within Burlington, but also nationwide. He's been invited to the White House a number of times for that White House Maker Fair that's taken place. And so his way of getting himself out there and his products is to serve that maker community in a way that he's doing a lot of hands-on, you know, does booths, does demonstrations, does giveaways, and it drives a lot of people to follow him and to, you know, interact with him. And I think the majority of it is it's fun for him, and he's doing it at these maker spaces or maker fairs, excuse me. And I think for, for Ben, you know, even though he does a lot on Facebook, he, he may do some stuff on Instagram. Uh, he is largely just passionate about seeing other maker communities grow. And that's part of how I think he got invited to go to the white house a couple of times for that maker fair. And I think there's like a nationwide, there's a nation of makers effort that's about that's launched just recently. Um, I think it's with uh, uh, Adam Savage at least was one, of the people I saw giving a talk about it. Um, so there's a ton that goes on for him within an actual physical community. Um, and I guess it's the same for Portland. Um, and with Joel, it's more virtual, right? It's the YouTube community and those 42,000 are probably spread throughout the world. Um, but you know, his is an ad based business, so they can be anywhere, you know, Ben's and Kelly's so far is obviously pretty hyper local. Um, this is a close up of his, a uh, little kit, which is quite fun to work on. And he, you know, shows kids at the maker fairs how to create your own, I think without blowing up or having glass go everywhere. Um, this is their Burlington fair that they, that he did. And that's a crazy looking rocket. And uh, I think you guys have done some rocket work at Tennessee tech that uh, Derek showed me. Um, last guy that I have here. Um, Jeff Tiedekin, um, another 3D RV visit. Uh, I don't know that everybody was a 3D RV visit, but certainly a good portion of them were. Uh, he's a machinist. He's a metal bender. And that's what I call him, metal bender. He, when I first met him, he told me that he likes sheet metal. And I thought back to my years in wood shop and metal shop where, you know, he's taking thin, you know, bits of metal, you know, thinner, thicker than aluminum foil, but not thick, you know, you know thin stuff. And he showed me these like quarter inch or three eighths inch pieces of steel. And he's like, yeah, I bend these. And so then he showed me different presses that he works with and so forth. And, uh, but anyway, he's built out, as you see here, you know, almost 10,000 followers on Instagram. He's, he got his start doing a blog. His business is called monkey 
like shiny. That's the MLS thing right up here in the screen that says MLS. He, uh, monkey likes shiny. I'm assuming he's the monkey and he likes shiny metal. And he started a blog, did that for four or five or six years and posted, you know, pretty regular, at least a few times a month and shared how he was making things and told that story of, you know, over and over what he was working on. And he does a lot of metal work for big brands that want trophies or plaques or things that, you know, and he's, he's in Northern California, Central California, he's in San Francisco Bay area. And so, he, but as he started doing these photos and, you know, there's some goofy ones that you see right here, but he's got most of the time things of him in progress, working on a project, bending or, you know, shaving metal, you know, cutting metal, you know, welding something, um, does a lot of bike work but used Instagram to drive a lot of traffic. So he's, you know, working with bigger brands. They're obviously seeing the stuff he's doing. Um, uh, this is his blog, Monkey Like Shiny. Uh, this is my son and him talking at, a, at the Autodesk University annual conference, um, doing an interview with each other. Um, that's obviously Jeff on the right, as you're looking at the screen. And that's a bike he built, a downhill, uh, no pedals, no brakes kind of bike. Um, and let me see. Oh, sorry. So Jeff's other strategy is he's pretty active doing demonstrations of, you know, a Haas machine, a Fadal machine, you know, pick your CNC at big trade shows and conventions. So he's at Autodesk university every year. He's at, um, you know, pick your, you know, machinist type trade show, um, the international uh, manufacturing shows, the one in Chicago and elsewhere. So he's, um, he makes a choice to get to these shows and, you know, obviously they're probably paying his way, but he's doing it to help them at these shows, but it just opens him up to other brands and other places. And then it keeps his small machine shop, you know, in plenty of business, you know, the, um, that's the big Red Bull. Red Bull is one of his big customers and he makes trophies for all the crazy, you know, X game type of stuff that they do. So it's, a way that he built his maker business and it's just him and you know a couple of other people in a shop um, and he's constantly telling a story of what he's doing and what other brands are doing you know what what's cool about the Red Bull competition that's going on and the trophy he made and how he made it so telling your story isn't always easy if you're an introvert and actually even though I'm you know stand you know sitting here giving you this talk I mean I'm a bit of an introvert myself um, some people would argue that's not true but because uh, I'm you know, out nationally and running around the country talking to people all the time. But I usually like to listen to your story and hear what you're up to. And so that would be a quick invite. You know, my emails in this presentation or uh, Dr. Fredon could give it to you. The, um, you're welcome to you know, send me an email with the cool stuff you're working on because I'm always in the midst of researching something or working on a brand project or working on a piece for um, some blog somewhere. And... I think the, uh, the key thing with each of these guys, right? They found that voice for Jeff. It's a combination of in person and he's quite a character. Um, and you know, for the others, they found the way that worked for them in today's, you know, marketplace, we can go through all the traditional ways of marketing and they still work, but the vast majority of the majority of it has moved to social. And so I think you have to pick one or two channels to, use as the primary way that you're going to share what you do, what you make and the process of how you make it. And a lot of times, you know, there's, there's a ton of them on Instagram that are really phenomenal. And I'm sure you've seen many of them where these guys are building something and they show how they make it or they show the process of how they're making it from you know, different artists to, you know, metal makers to woodworkers. Um, it's, it's just an amazing time to be starting a business because you can, you can tell the story if you don't like to talk, you can tell it via photographs, right? And so people really, you have a, a great way to get started and to find those people who are interested in what you're doing. And over time, that turns into people who buy what you're doing. Um, this was just a quick segue that in Instagram, don't forget, you know, if you're trying to figure out who to, you know, how to find people, Instagram is a good way to do it, even if you're not going to use it as a, as a tool. You can go in and search for the places, the people, the tags, I do this a lot. I mean, you see that makers going to make as a hashtag, you know, it's a pretty popular way to share something and put a hashtag on it. Um, you know, it's a pretty popular one, although it's still tiny in the scheme of, you know, whether there's big consumer 
interest in a product that's, you know, you know, in your, the Kim Kardashians of the world, you know, the maker's going to make is tiny. So that same old public speaking thing, what did I say? What did I tell you again? You know, tell your story, find and rally your community. Um, and you guys have a great foundation there at Tennessee Tech. I mean, what, what Dr. Fadon and the rest of the team have built, you know, the fact that you have a makerspace, the fact that you have a, a, an administration that's keen on incubating and helping you guys get things off the ground. I mean, a foundry, I mean, there's only a handful of foundries at schools. I don't know that there's any other foundry I've ever seen unless it's at a specific trade school, but at a university, that's pretty amazing. And then I didn't get to visit it, but you guys have that accelerator um, effort that as I came into campus, I saw. So there's all these resources for you to already tie into a community, even if you don't live, you know, if you're not from Tennessee and you're, you know, going to school there, but you're not from there, you know I mean? You could use that as a base and then jump from there. So um, that's my quick uh, marketing your maker business and um, feel free to get in touch and tell me the cool things you're working on. Thanks uh, Dr. Fredon and Terry for making this happen.